Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. I recently was presented with an opportunity to see my first carnivorous plants in the wild. Today, I'm going to be sharing that experience with you. My son had found out that he would be traveling to Houston, Texas for a basketball tournament. I was speaking with a friend of mine when they mentioned that they thought they heard that some carnivorous plants grew wild in East Texas. I decided to do some research and found out that there's a place called Big Thicket Nature Preserve that had sundews, saracenia, lingucula, and butterworts. Texas is a big state and I figured that Big Thicket would probably be too far away from Houston for me to make the drive. It turned out it was just a short two hour drive from Houston, so I decided to go for it. I was running a car with unlimited miles and decided right then and there that I was definitely going to be heading to Big Thicket Nature Preserve. My son had an afternoon basketball game, so I decided to get up at 5.30 a.m. so I had plenty of time to explore and then also not miss the game. Southeast Texas is also very hot and humid, so hiking in the park earlier seemed like a much better idea than going in the afternoon or evening. I started off my journey by finding the visitor center and learning some stuff. The visitor center was really nice and I was able to learn more about carnivorous plants that grow in the park. The park rangers were extremely helpful and answered a lot of the questions that I had. I strongly recommend stopping here and taking a look. Even if you're not visiting for carnivorous plants, the visitor center was really neat and had a lot of cool exhibits, especially for young kids. Just a quick disclosure before we go too much further, my cell phone camera wasn't working very well. It was glitching and I have no idea why. Some of my cell phone footage is a little shaky, so I offer you my deepest apologies for that. It was a beautiful drive from Houston to Big Thicket. Older, small rural towns and green dense forests led me to this amazing place. I pulled up to a dirt road that I had to follow for about two miles that ended at the pitcher plant trail. This is where I would get to see my first carnivorous plant in the wild. I spent a lot of time in the wild, but it's always been in the Pacific Northwest. The feel of the forest here is vastly different. The sounds were completely foreign to me. I just had to stop a moment and take in the noises of the Eastern Texas wilderness. The pitcher plant trail has a boardwalk that led me to the area where I was able to see my first Saracenia in the wild. It was humid out, the boardwalk was actually a little slick, so be very careful if you go. Walking through the woods, I was eagerly anticipating when I'd get to spot my first pitcher plant. Real quick though, before I show you what I found, check out how you can get your hands on your very own carnivorous plant. I'm so excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They are one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year-round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, they have been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R, Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and head on back to the video. Finally, after walking just a little bit, I came upon this right here. The first carnivorous plant I've ever seen in the wild. It's not the most impressive Saracenia, but it's one I'll always remember. They call the Saracenia here pale pitcher plants. It's a Saracenia alata. Once I saw one, more and more started popping up until I was in a thicket filled with patches of Saracenia everywhere. I felt like I was a kid in a candy shop, looking all around at the carnivorous plants that surrounded me and just trying to take it all in. As I walked through this area and approached the other side of the thicket, I realized something. It hit me just how special and unique these plants are. As soon as I exited the area where the conditions weren't perfect, the plants just ceased to exist. I started to correlate how difficult these plants can be to grow at home with how difficult it looks for them to grow in the wild. There's a tiny patch of land that has just the perfect amount of water, perfect amount of soil that's been stripped of minerals and salt, and just the right amount of sun coming through. Once you arrive to an area where these conditions stop, so do the plants. Seeing this in nature really helped me realize how incredible and special these plants are. Of course I had to stop and turn around and go through the thicket again. This time I decided to take it all in and do some searching for sundews. Before I found the sundews, I ran into this beautiful little spider with a perfectly spun web. I didn't want to get too close as I had no idea if it was venomous or not. Let me know in the comments what this spider is and if it's dangerous. 
I knew they were here, but they grow under the top layer of forest floor. I had to search and pull some ground back, but I finally found the beautiful little sundews thriving down on the forest floor. These are Drosera capillaris. They are tiny, but are simply incredible to witness in nature. We'll be finding more of these here in a moment when we get to the sundew trail. But before we go there, let's just take a moment and take in the beauty of all these wonderful Saracenia alata, or pale pitcher plants. To the car. There is another trail that I really wanted to walk along, the Sundew Trail. This trail was really well maintained and taken care of. There's lots of great info and even had stops along the way where you could listen to information about carnivorous plants and Big Thicket National Preserve. Sporadic fashion with big open spaces in between. Patches of sky peek through the branches of pine needles above that allow sun to shine on almost all sides of the pine trees. Sunlight cascades to the thicket and pine needle litter. If you have the time, I strongly recommend making each stop and learning as much as you can about this amazing place. The trail was great, but I wasn't really seeing any sundews. I finally reached an area where there was a small clearing and had a ton of sundews all over the ground. Please take a moment and check out some of these beautiful sundews that I was able to witness. On my way out of the Sundew Trail, I did come across an area where I was able to see more pitcher plants. Only five different types of carnivorous plants grow in North America. Saracenia pitcher plants, sundews, pinquicula, bladderworts, and the most famous of all, Venus flytraps. Out of those five, you can see four in Big Thicket National Preserve. The only one that you can't see in the preserve is Venus flytraps. I didn't get the chance to see any pings or bladder warts, as I had to move along to my son's game, but I feel so fortunate to have had the opportunity to see so many wonderful sundews and Saracenia pitcher plants. If you ever get the chance to visit Big Thicket National Preserve, I strongly recommend it. If I'm ever in the area again, I will definitely be making the trip out to see some of these beautiful carnivorous plants. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. I appreciate you so much and really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.